Hey guys, this is Mr. Crayfish, and welcome back to my modding tutorials. In this tutorial today, I'm going to be teaching you how to add food into the game. So a couple of people have been asking me how do I add food, and I thought I would um, do food before I go on to tools and stuff like that, because tools are a little bit harder, but um, they're not extremely hard, but food's a lot more easier to start off with. So we're going to be adding food into the game today, so let's get straight into it actually. Um, I've actually uh, removed all the code from the previous two tutorials because I don't really need it. Um, you guys can keep it in for your mod. Um, basically I'm just showing you how to add in food, I'm not creating a mod as such. But in the few, or further in the tutorials we, we, we will be creating a mod and showing you how to um, distribute it afterwards. So what we're going to do is create a new line under here. Just put this under your item variables that we created from last tutorial. Um, doesn't really matter. So we're going to type public static item and then we're going to type in um, item and then the name of your food. So item cheese. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to ch create cheese or something like that and then you're just going to click on the first import here it should have net.minecraft.item then inside the pre-initialization method here what we want to do is type in item cheese or the name of your food and you'll type equals new item now not just item we're going to type in item food then two brackets on the end and then a semicolon highlight over item food and you want to import the first one here and then you'll see that it's still got a red line under it what we've got to do is click on all right there's two there's two of these here let's ha let's take a look at the item food class to be honest so press I oh know we can't I don't think press control press control and then click on item food and you see that it highlights over it click it and it will take us to the food class here let's have a look what these two variables do. Alright, so um, this first one here is the heal amount. This first, the second parameter here is the saturation. So if you guys know in Minecraft the saturation, um, certain foods um, will keep your hunger bar up for longer. That's how we can modify that. And then this third boolean is a wolf's favorite meat and this allows you to actually feed the food to your pet wolf or pet dog, essentially. So what you want to do inside the brackets here is you want to decide how much your food is going to heal. So how the calculations work is um, it's basically x, whatever x is, what x is your variable that you put in, times 0 0.5, and then that will give you an answer. So the max number you can do in there is 20 because 20 times 0 0.5 equals 10 hearts and you've only got 10 hearts on Minecraft if you put in 5 you'll only get 2.5 hearts so it's ba it's basically just half of whatever you put in there so I think we're gonna make this a superfood and I'm just gonna put 20 in there for fun then the next variable put a comma after that um, number there is the saturation so I think we're going to make this quite OP but uh, what you want to do is type in 1.0 F or you can do a lower number that's I'm not sure how high this can actually go up to haven't really tested around with it but you can do variables like um, 0.5 F if you want and the saturation will last half the time as this item cheese here you can do 0.2 which is very low and you almost have to eat another piece of food straight afterwards um, I'm just going to do 1.0 F and then the next the last variable is if this food can be eaten by a wolf so I'm gonna make it so it can be so go ahead and type in true if you don't want it to be eaten by a wolf put in false then again we've just got to register the item so game registry dot register item put in item cheese and then for the second bit here put in item cheese again and then get unlocalized name dot substring 5 
so I'll just let you guys have a look at that. Now we've actually got to set the unlocalized name up here as well, so you set after the bracket, set unlocalized name, and then we're just going to call this item cheese. Now if we go ahead and we load up the game, and if you get this message or something like that, don't worry. Oh, just for me, because I actually removed um, the items from the game, it's going to give me this error because it can't find those items or blocks in the save again. Um, just click yes, it doesn't really matter. That that message would only apply if you've actually um, distributed the mod already and it's released to the public and someone um, created a proper serious world that they're actually using to play in. Um, that would worry because you would need to get those items in your mod again. So what we're going to do is we're going to type forward slash again forward slash give tab one space your mod ID and then press tab and then we see we've got item cheese and now we've got a delicious food. We're just going to go into game mode S and we're actually going to lose some of our hunger so let's uh, start running around everywhere. Alright I think we've depleted it enough it's almost at zero now so we're simply going to eat the item now so do it like any normal item right click it and we notice that we start eating and then our hunger bar went back up to full and we've practically got max saturation which is crazy so that's how you create food items I'm just gonna go back into the code and um, I don't suggest that you set the values to this this is absolutely OP um, I suggest that you set the values to a lot lower so for the 20 here set it to something under 20 like 10 or 5 just play around with the values until you get something that you like with this 1.0 F um, this is the saturation so 1.0 is max saturation I'm not sure if you can put it higher than that you possibly can so if you want a really high saturation food put this up really high um, usually um, they're below 1.0 F so I think beef is actually 0.8F and if you guys know beef is the most saturated food in the game um, obviously 1.0 is a lot more is a lot higher or is higher than 0.8 so it's actually going to give you a longer saturation now we're not completely done with this tutorial what we're actually going to do is make it so you can actually cook this food in the oven to create um, a new food now I'm actually going to change these values down I'm going to change this one to 8, I'm going to change the saturation to 0 0.5 and then I'm going to make it so this is false and then I'm going to create a new um, piece of food so we're just going to do the same public static item and it's called either item grilled cheese so this is going to be cooked in the furnace guys and then again initialize the item so item grilled cheese equals new item food then just put in your values so I'm gonna do the same as what I on actually I'm just gonna double them 16 1.0 F and then make this true so our wolf can eat it set the unlocalized name whoops what's this oops it was just giving me random crap set unlocalized name and then we're gonna put that as item grilled cheese and then just end it off with a semicolon give you a second to look at that and then register the item so game registry dot register item so put in item grilled cheese if you've got Eclipse you can simply just um, press down on the arrows and then press enter when you're highlighted over item grilled cheese there then we just have to enter it again here because it doesn't come up item grilled cheese and then do get and localize name dot substring five. Now I'll give you a second to look at that again. Now to make this item cheese smelt into item grilled cheese, what we've got to do is just type in game registry dot register register sm what is it register? Oh no 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 my bad it's not register it's dot add smelting so you want to put the second variable the second um, 
option here, click on that, and then put in item cheese for the first one, and then for the output, what is the output taking? It's an item stack. So for the output bit here, what you want to do is type new item stack, and then put in item grilled cheese into those brackets there. Highlight over item stack, import it, and then the XP amount, what value does that take? A float. So I think we might put in 5.0F. Now you probably have to play around with this value a little bit here. So you could either do the 1, you could do 10, you could do 100. I don't really know. I'm just going to do 5 for the float there. It might be a little bit too overpowered, but we'll see how it goes. So put that in there. We load up the game. Make sure you save it as well while you go. I keep forgetting to tell you guys that. Save it as you go. And we're just going to go back into game mode C. Get out a furnace. Get out some coal. And then place that down. Put the coal inside. And then we'll get our item. So give. Um, you should know how to do this now. So give yourself the item. So I'm going to give myself the item cheese. Go inside the furnace here. Put item cheese in. And then you'll see that it is now cooking. And then it will give us our item grilled cheese. Now we've still got to add the names to them as well. I just thought I would go over this real quickly. We've got our item grilled cheese now. And this we should be able to... Well, we can't eat it because we're in creative. So yeah, that's how you add smelting or cooking to the furnace. And you can do that with ores as well. Um, but we're going to get that get into that as well um, once we start looking at ores and oh yeah we still got to do ores and generation that's something I haven't done in a while so that's going to be new for me um, now we're actually going to add the names to the items so simply go into the en.us.lang file or whatever you've um, some guy said in the comments that he could that you could um, that he wanted to make a Spanish one so if you're doing like a Spanish one or something like that what you can do is is type instead of en underscore us for your file, you type es underscore mx dot lang, and that stands for Espanol Mexico or something like that. So under your item, oh wait, this we don't really need this anymore because that was our old blocks. So in your en dot us lang file, type in item dot the name of your item, so or the unlocalized name, so item cheese. Copy that, put that in, and then dot name equals, I'm just going to call it cheese, and then do the same for the other one, so item, and then the other one's item grilled cheese, copy, paste, dot name equals grilled cheese. Now, just one tip as well, I forgot to mention this, make sure there's no spaces in between this equal bit here, so don't have a space there or don't have a space there. It needs to be exactly after it. Now press the save button up here to save the lang file and then um, we'll run the game and then after this works we'll start adding some textures to it. And here we go. Um, it now says for our grilled cheese that we've got grilled cheese. We'll quickly just go get the other one. So give forged a name um, cheese. So this one's named cheese and then this one's named grilled cheese because it was cooked in the furnace. Now we're just going to add some textures to them. So you should know how to do this if you've followed previous tutorials. So I'm just going to create some. I'm going to save them into the uh, items, this over here, this texture, this items folder that we've got over here and then we're going to set the name. So create the texture and then put it into this items bit and then we'll come back. So I've created two textures now. I've created item cheese which is here item cheese and then we've got our item grilled cheese so that's just a little bit darker wasn't going to do anything too crazy and what we're going to do now is we're going to set the texture name so um, at the end of set unlocalized name just do set texture name and then this is item cheese so we're going to put in tutorial mod item cheese and then for the grilled cheese the same thing um, just grilled cheese so set texture name, oops, what did that do? <laughs> set, come on, set texture name, T 
TM item grilled cheese. And if we go ahead, press save, and we run the game now, and you'll see that we've got cheese, and then we've got grilled cheese. So there we go, guys. That's how you add food into Minecraft. And before we end off this episode, just a brief overview, and then that will finish it off. So create your um, variables up here. Um, just simply your item, public static item, then your name, and then your semicolon at the end. Initialize them, but instead of item, put item food. And then we've got to enter three parameters. The first one is the heal amount, so how many hunger um, bars it will actually heal up. So it's basically half of the number here, so eight will heal up four bars. And then the next one is the saturation, so a high, a high saturation is one point oh f um, a low saturation is probably 0 0.2 uh, beef is 0 0.8 so if you take into note that beef is the highest saturation you should be able to create something that's quite even and then false or this next value is a boolean so um, false means that a a dog can't eat it if it's true that means a dog can eat it then just make sure it's you set your unlocalized name and then set the texture name and then register it down here um, simply first variable, then get unlocalized name, and substring it by five. Then register, add it to the, the smelting. So you put your item cheese, and then make the output to a new item stack item grilled cheese, and then put 0.5f on the end. And there we go, guys. Oh, you don't have to put 5.0f. That's whatever you want the XP amount to give you when you smelt it. And yeah, that's basically how you add food in and add it to the smelting list so hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial today in the next episode I think we're going to uh, work on tools so this is going to be cool people like to add tools into the game so make sure you stick around for that episode and I will see you then bye